What's up y'all? I'm out here at the range as you can see back behind me. Been out here doing some testing, having a lot of fun, enjoying this fantastic weather. It's getting towards the end of the day, but I got time to get one more test done and I'm gonna round it out with some tin mill. So as you can see, we got the jelly contraption set up with the chrono and two blocks of gel. So we got our two blocks of gel down here. Now, like I said, I've done a few tests in these in this front block that I'm working in. I've done one 45 ACP test. And as you can see, they ain't nothing but straight lines. So they shouldn't get it in the way too bad i am sticking with the heavy clothing barrier of course with a layer of denim fleece and two layers of the cotton t-shirt material and what we got like i said are a couple of 10 mil rounds here now they're labeled 10 mil rounds but y'all know how i am how picky i am about 10 mil i can just tell you from the velocity on the box and the weight of these they're not going to be what i'm expecting but we're going to try them out anyway so we've got the hunter versus the defender we've got the hornady handgun hunter now these are a lighter one these are 130 35 grain with their monoflex projectile it's got that goo stuff down in the cavity to keep it from clogging or help aid in expansion um, like i say 135 grain projectile the box velocity is saying 1315 so already i mean that's not even close to the power i would call 10 mil i mean we get uh, 1320 from 180 grain buffalo board there's just i just don't understand it y'all really just don't understand it but anyway what we're putting up against the hunter is the defender here so we got the usa ready defense winchester stuff now this is basically the civilian version of the uh, winchester ranger one the ranger ones have like a blue hex insert and these have a red but this has got their little uh, what do they call it? their hex vent ridged insert or rigid insert supposed to help from clog and aid in expansion yada 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 now the muzzle velocity on this one is claiming 1250 with a 170 grain projectile so again 1250 at 170 grain I, that sounds a little better to me than this one i'll have to do the numbers here but even still i mean it has just it just needs a little more in my opinion and what we're going to be testing these things out of is the good old trusty glock 20 gen 4 with the four and a half inch barrel so I'm actually curious to see what these things do in the gel, even though, you know, I already know just based on the numbers, they're not going to live up to my power expectations, but maybe they'll still put in a good performance in the gel. Let me get this stuff set up and let's check them out. All right, let's get some speeds on these things, y'all. I'm going to do a five round average from each one, starting with the handgun hunter first. Now, remember, these are 135 grain calling for 1315 muzzle velocity. Well, let's get this five round average on these. Got 1284, 1280, 1241, 1256, and 1246. So not quite that 1315. Let's check the average. All right, y'all, I knew what to expect and I'm still just blown away. I think that's just absolutely terrible for 10 mil. Our five round average on that was 1,261 feet per second, extreme spread of 42 and a standard deviation of 19.4. So I just don't get it. I just don't get a 1,261 average, 135 grain projectile for a 10 mil. That's just pitiful. All right, let's check out the USA Readies and see what they do. Uh, remember, these are 170 grain claiming 1250 on the box, which I'm not willing to bet we ain't gonna see. Well, let's see what they do give us, y'all. Wind's about to blow me over. Got 1258, well, prove me wrong, so we got our 1250 at least on that one. 1246, 1229, 12.39 and 12.28. So we got it on the very first one, but once it started heating up, it dropped down a little bit. Still not very far off, but still we needed every single bit of that to even get close to what I think it should be. Now, again, if y'all can't see these far numbers, let me know. But honestly, on the 10 mil one right here, it's kind of useful having this, especially that 50 yarder, because that can be another good way to judge 10 mil ammo. But let's check out this average. 
All right, so that time our five round average was 1,240 feet per second. Our extreme spread was 30 and the standard deviation was 12 and a half. So 1,240 feet per second with 170 grain projectiles, just not there, y'all. Um, 1,240 average, and if you remember on those hunt, uh, handgun hunters, it was 1,261. So you're talking about only 21 feet per second faster from that pretty good bit lighter projectile in the handgun hunters. But all that being said, they're probably still gonna look nice and pretty in the gel so let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's predator versus prey jelly time i'm gonna put one of each round into the gel we're gonna start with this handgun hunter first should be getting the readings for the jelly round and everything here too let's see where i can put this i can't remember exactly what the impact on this 20 is ah <laughs> It wasn't that far left, I can tell you that. Let me try another one. All right, let's try that again, y'all. See if we can manage to catch this one. What I can tell you, Joe, just because of how much I've done these tests, judging by that wound track where it first went in, it definitely expanded immediately. So we got to catch one of these things. I got to quit acting goofy. I don't know if it's me or it's probably me. I'd like to make excuses. All right, that was actually perfect, exactly where I went to wanted to put it the first time. Let's go check it out. All right, y'all, that one's in an absolutely perfect spot. I hate I messed that first one up because now it's put me in a real tough position here. It's just totally in the way. I'm gonna try to put this Defender up or this uh, USA Ready, I keep calling it the Defender, USA Ready up under that one. Hopefully I don't get into the bottom down there. Let's see what this thing will do, y'all. All right, I think that actually ended up pretty good. Let me go check it out and see what we got. All right, let's check this stuff out, y'all. So I've got you flipped over again. This is actually the top view of the block, how it would have been originally, but now we're looking from the top down so you can see a little better. That one down at the very bottom, that's that one that got in the way. As you can see, actually that would have stayed in the block, so I ain't really blaming myself no more for that. It was going straight and then it took a hard left out the side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that the jail's fault right there instead of me messing up. But the rest of them we got good views of now. What we got down here basically Basically is absolutely fantastic 40 Smith & Wesson performance. And I'm not saying that in a bad way against 40 Smith & Wesson. I'm saying that, uh, that this ammo is just not up to speed. It's just not up to speed. This is absolutely beautiful performance in the gel from these two rounds here, but it's not the power that I expect from 10 mil. But what we got here, right here on the top, that's the uh, Hornady Handgun Hunter. Now there's a single line track right behind this. You can see the entrance right there and then back behind it, but it's totally separate. And all of this right here is completely covered. It's the same size as this other little 45 ACP track. So very, very nice disruption there. Comes in, immediate expansion. There's no doubt about it. Obviously cares nothing about that cloth. Carries on through this block and looks like it's about three inches from the end here and absolutely fantastic expansion. Now, one thing I am noticing is it's still got the old gooey stuff in this one. I, if I remember correctly, the one I've tested out of either 460 Magnum or 454 Casul, I didn't see any of that. So I don't know what happened. Maybe I melted it back down with the gel or maybe that stuff was just going so fast it just evaporated. But anyway, then down here at the bottom, like I say, not the very bottom one, but right in the middle there, that's the USA Ready. This one also comes in immediately Immediate expansion, you can see the little red insert piece right there. It dropped it out within like the first two inches. Very, very nice disruption again. Carries through this block here. And this one actually went maybe about an inch further than the other one, but also some absolutely incredible expansion. That thing's sitting there turned over backwards looking like a tarantula or something. Now, as far as your penetration, this Hornady Handgun Hunter here, it's actually at 13 and a half inches of forward momentum, had a little bit of rebound, but 13 and a half inches forward. And then the USA Ready here, it's actually at 
14 and a quarter. So some pretty good penetration for both of these rounds. And I can just tell you, just massive uh, expansion out of them. So here's your closer look. So like I say, there's your USA Ready. You can see that insert down there. Very, very nice disruption. I'll just show you this one while we're here. That's the Handgun Hunter. Both of these things, really, really nice. And just look at that expansion on that one. And then the USA Ready, it's sideways, so you can't see it real good. But here from the top, you can see them also. And I'm gonna pull them here in just a second and we'll check them out. But as you can see, like I was saying, this one here, if you look at it from above, you can tell that was that one that's behind it, totally separated. All right, let's check these things out, y'all. Definitely a tale of two different types of projectiles here. This one right here, obviously the Handgun Hunter, all copper projectile. Really, really nice looking expansion. Very, very even symmetrical. Looks like it didn't lose any kind of material. And then this one here, obviously the USA Ready. Much different, a lead projectile. This thing started losing a little bit. Some very, very nice expansion. Now this right here, I broke off myself as I was pulling it out, so I'll count that as far as the weight but like i was saying on this handgun hunter we actually even kept a goo inside there i'll measure it and all that and then i'll see if i can pop it out i'm sure it pops right out but i believe that's the first time i've ever caught that stuff in it i probably just melted it down with my gel all the previous tests i've done on them and just didn't realize it but let's check some weights out on them and see what we got there this usa ready started at 170 and now it looks like it lost some and yeah it, it probably did it's coming in at 163 3.2 so i would say it definitely lost a little bit of material and then this hornady handgun hunter here it started at 135 and it's at 134.8 so i wouldn't think you lost anything off of that one there and then as far as the measurements on them we'll start here with this usa ready first this direction here you got 642 644 and then this long side here is going to be much bigger you got 774, so some really nice expansion from that one there. And in this handgun hunter here, this should be some really, really even measurements. You got 771, 765, and 766, so some fantastic, very, very even expansion from that one. And there you have it, y'all, the 10 millimeter hunter versus defender is what I'm calling them. Very nice performance out of both of these for a 40 Smith and Wesson round. I'm gonna say it again, because these are just not up to 10 10 millimeter speed and power they're just not for this weight you should have more speed going on which would give you more power you know this is another one of situations where they performed absolutely fantastic in this single use case if you were looking at these and didn't take into account what the standard is or what you should expect to get from a 10 mil but once you take that into account these just fall short they just absolutely fall short now if i had these would i feel underpowered absolutely not not in any way but i wouldn't go out and purposely get these as a 10 mil round all right, y'all, that right there is gonna do it for what I'm gonna call another pretend mill test. It seems like I find myself in this position nine out of 10 times that I test 10 mil these days. It's just not living up to my expectations. It's just not. I know some people out there are fine with this kind of power and speed from 10 mil, but that's not what this stuff is meant to be. A 10 mil is not meant to be just an oversized, heavier, harder to conceal 40 Smith & Wesson. If you're looking for power like this, just step down to a 40 Smith the Wesson, you'll have a smaller tool. It'll be lighter. It'll be easier to conceal. I just don't understand why 10 mil users and owners are okay with this weakened ammo. Now, that being said, again, if you isolate this one particular performance here and take the fact that it's supposed to be 10 mil out of the equation, you've got an absolutely fantastic performance 40 Smith & Wesson round. You've got two fantastic performing 40 Smith & Wesson rounds. But I've ranted and raved about 10 mil till I'm blue in the face, so I'm going to leave that where it's at y'all let me know what y'all think about the performance out of these things at 10 mil owners out there are you okay with this type of performance or do you expect bigger and better things like i do let me know down in the comments what y'all's thoughts are if you did enjoy the video reach down and hit that thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel for a whole lot more good stuff and make sure you've got them notifications turned on so you don't miss anything when i upload it like i always ask you take a second if you would if you're doing some shopping and check out those affiliate links in the video description anything 
anything you buy after going through any of those links down there, I get a kickback from them towards the channel, so I really do appreciate that. Like always, I appreciate all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel like y'all do. I've had a lot of fun out here and done some very interesting testing. I think I'm going to wrap it up for the day, though. Tons of really good stuff on the way, so be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.